Que pase, amigos? I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the last day of July. It is the 31st. Now, what we like to do on this show is look at OTC and penny stocks that have got something going for them, that have potential. And I found one today that is building up buzz on the internet. There's a lot of excitement around this company. This was a reverse merger at the beginning of the year. They just got their ticker on the board about 10 days ago. So now is an excellent time to be looking at it because, well, I think they're going to explode myself. I think they're tapping into a market that is ready to be tapped into and they're going about it in a very smart way. We're taking a look at cartel. No, 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 not that kind of cartel. No, this one is completely above board, completely legitimate and begins with a K. Their ticker is KRTL Cartel Holdings Group. Now they finished today on Friday at a nickel with just over 4% gains. If you ask me, I say they're still under the radar. Yeah, people are talking about it, but they haven't jumped on board yet. They're on the pink tier, they're current, they've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. Now you hear me say in every show how important these green ticks are, and they are. There's a lot of information that's validated by the OTC markets behind the scenes, and when it all comes up green, this is what we get two green ticks. So especially on a pink, right? You want to get as much verified information as you can get. So this is looking really good. Now they are a self-proclaimed shell company. That means that they don't have any revenues coming in right yet. Now I don't know if that's exactly accurate or not because this was a private company. They just became public and none of their financials have been posted yet. So I really don't know what's going on. But the fact remains, they have not posted anything here at the OTC market. So they are still considered a shell company. Now, I told you they did a reverse merger and they did. It was back January 11th that was completed. Publicly held Queench, original ticker QENC, announces the completion of change of control with KRTL Biotech. They also confirm that Quince's business model shift is now to biotechnology. And it was just about 10 days ago that they got their ticker up too. So they're ready to rock and roll. So what exactly is this company about? Well, to answer that question, let's start over here at the company deck. A company deck is a brochure. They call it a business overview. This came out this year, so it is current. However, it's not as comprehensive as I thought it might be which really isn't a problem because the company has got a lot of websites, 10, 12, 14, I don't know. They got a lot of websites. All of them are different and all of them have different types of information. So doing research on cartel was more like a scavenger hunt than anything else. But I'm going to try to put this in a nice, neat package for you. Now, the company tells us they do conduct business in multiple sectors, including biotechnology and security, healthcare, energy, cyber, IT, and environmental. But the fact is, when I was doing all of my research, it seems whatever it is they do, it's all synergistically supporting the biotechnology. Everything they do is helping support and push the biotech forward. So that is their primary thrust. Now, the company has four subsidiaries. They do have Cartel Biotech, Cartel International, Cartel Asia, and Cartel Canada. Now, these three subsidiaries here are working around the world, laying foundations, opening up doors, getting things ready so that they can move their pre-formulations and products in all areas around the world. So, Cartel International is working with Africa, Europe, the Middle East, South America, Obviously, Cartel Canada is working with Canada, and Cartel Asia is working in South Korea, which is really the big thrust right now because they've gotten a government go-ahead on research for what they're doing. Now, what is it exactly that they do? If we jump over to one of their websites, they do tell us here that Cartel Biotech is an international research and development company working with CBD and psilocybin. LSD. That's their primary ingredients for their drugs and their pre-formulations. They tell us they do have operations in the United States, Korea, and Canada with a large consortium of experienced Korean, Canadian, and U.S. doctors, along with lots of researchers, all dedicated to improving mankind's debilitating physical and mental ailments. And they are picking the big ones. 
Jumping on over to another one of their websites. This one is cartelbiotech.com. We get a list of six of those debilitating physical and mental ailments that they are targeting. Now I put myself up here on the top so that you can read this information down here at the bottom. I'm not going to go through it all. I'm just going to touch on to a few things so you're aware of what is going on here. They've got six here in the list. Autism is the first at $2.4 billion a year. And did you know that one out of every 54 kids born in America has autism? I had no clue. Now the good news here is, is that insurance coverage for autistic children has improved over the last four years, jumping from 36% to 64% coverage. And that is across all 50 states. They also tell us they are targeting ADHD. This is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Now this is a very vigorous market. There are lots of drugs that are being introduced to try to help these children from Adderill to My Day Is, and most of them really aren't working. They're addictive, they have side effects. So maybe psilocybin could help this. They're looking. The next one, this is the biggest market out there. It's approaching $100 billion a year. Pain treatment for cancer patients. Folks, the problem here is, is that most of these drugs are as debilitating as the pain itself. There's so many side effects. You got to take other drugs to counteract the side effects. There is room for improvement here and there's lots of money to be made. They are also working with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, would it surprise you to know that more women have PTSD than men do in America? We think of PTSD as, you know, veterans getting it from war. Women get it from bad relationships, from being beat by men. So there's a lot of that going on. Shame, shame, shame. Now the problem here is, is that it's only a $1 billion market because mostly it's talk therapy. It's groups getting together, trying to help each other, feel comfortable, but that doesn't fix anything. So they've been giving them drugs to mess with their serotonin levels, their dopamine levels, try to make them feel good by letting the feel good chemicals in our body do something. But that's not where the problem is with PTSD. It's deep in the psyche of a person, up here. And they believe psilocybin, LSD, will make the connection. You don't have to have others help you. You'll be able to help yourself. They also have anxiety disorder and depression medications, pre-formulations that they're trying to come up with. And did you know, this is an $18 billion market, but it could get a lot huger because they tell us here that there has been an introduction of technology with advanced therapies where they use medical implants used for brain stimulation and virtual reality exposure therapies using smartphone-based applications. No, not this company. The rest of the world is coming up with an implant where you can use virtual reality to try to help the person. Maybe it will be good. Problem is, it's very, very expensive right now, and most insurance companies won't cover it. And most of the drugs they're using for uh, depression and anxiety disorders are all addictive, so we need help. They've got lots of room here to grow. And the very last one, well, is wide open, folks, addiction. We don't have any drugs, we don't have any pre-formulations to help people resolve their addictions. We have clubs, we have groups, we have therapies. That's what we got. Talk, 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 talk. And that really doesn't help anybody quit their drugs, their alcoholism, their sex addiction, whatever it is, really. An addiction is an addiction. And it's not about the body and it's not something a drug is going to fix. You got to get into the psyche of the individual and they've got to make connection. And that's what psilocybin can do. So this is the markets they are working on. And they have a consortium of doctors and researchers all working on this. But what is going to make it really successful beyond that is the consortium of companies that have all come together to make Cartel Biotech what it's going to be. We're now looking at a list of partners we get from another one of the websites from Cartel. This is cartelholdings.com. And this is a very interesting relationship you got going here. It truly is a consortium. Everybody is working for everybody's interest. A lot of these companies have already invested money into Cartel as well as having deals to work with Cartel. This company here, Here to Serve Holdings, is on the OTC market. They own Pervasip which is also, I believe, on the OTC market. 
Perficip owns Artesian. So these companies are working with each other in a very tightly knit group. And everybody has the same objective, to push Cartel Biotech up the ladder of success. Now remember I told you earlier that this company does all sorts of things. These are the sort of things they're doing. But all of these relate to the CBD psilocybin business one way or the other. They have lots of technology, they have lots of farming, they have lots of properties, they have lots of scientists, intellectual property, and all of it is coming together in a beautiful, pristine portrait. Now, the very first piece of news I found was on Here to Serve Holdings Corp, which is on the OTC market. This was back in October 25th of last year. It states that Here to Serve Holdings Corp, which owns 15% of Cartel Biotech, is pleased to announce that Cartel has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with AgTech Global International, ticker AGGL, that allows AgTech to acquire 10% of Cartel for $2 million and provides AgTech with revenue sharing component and certain commercial licensing rights. What this is, folks, is AgTech is investing into Cartel, but along with their investment, it gives them the right now to work in partnership with the company. And both Cartel is going to make money and AgTech is going to make money. They tell us that with the investment from AgTech, Cartel is looking to enter what management believes will be a disruptive opportunity in medicine within the next decade. Cartel is quickly progressing as a global leader in psilocybin research as it has MFDS approval to create medicines from psilocybin and other plant compounds in South Korea. We're going to see more information about that, but this is the big deal. You don't have to sit around America waiting for laws to evolve. Other countries are advancing much faster than America, and those are going to be the doorways to first mover advantage. According to Kai Kim, co-CEO, of Cartel Biotech Inc. Cartel is an early entrant in the race in Asia to create medicines from psilocybin to help a diversity of human ailments. I have organized and assembled a consortium of outstanding research scientists. We anticipate that our access and commitments from international medical specialists and scientific researchers will provide Cartel with the opportunity to be first to market with new and exciting compounds formulated from psilocybin and other plant compounds, which will allow new medicines to be developed and eventually prescribed. But there's more. This company, AGGL, AgTech Global International, they changed their name. They changed their ticker to GXXY, Galaxy Holdings. Back here in April, we had a news press come out. AgTech Global International announces its name change to Galaxy Holdings. And just to put everything in perspective, they did have a piece of news here on the 27th of this month where they acquired Wellbeing Farms LLC. I want you to take a quick notice here that Wellbeing Farms LLC is a privately owned company specializing primarily in the production and marketing of proprietary CBD slash mushroom combination products. That's a very unique blend, folks. Psilocybin and CBD, mushrooms and CBD, exactly what Cartel is doing. So these companies are aligned in their strategies and interests. Now, if we jump over to a current financial report to get a little bit of insight about this company, because not only are they selling products, but they have some intellectual property that is going to make a difference in how quickly they can market their products, get them out there. I quote, since its acquisition of Galaxy Corporation, Galaxy Holdings Inc. is developing a high-profile online CBD and wellness products business marketing direct strategy to consumers. Galaxy's proprietary patent-pending virtual retail marketing system, better known as VRMS, is a unique hybrid retailing approach to enable rapid mass marketing of its online CBD product range via an intended network of thousands of businesses and retail outlets which actually have physical contact with millions of consumers.
The VRMS will automate the online registration process of referring customers by engaging business members and crew members as advocates for its product offerings. Galaxy's dedicated call center outreach operations markets the in-store VRMS and ships it to each business outlet at no cost. Currently, Galaxy's initial CBD range is comprised of 15 products, and over the next 12 months, they hope to kick it up to 30 products. So you've got a company here that is working the same sort of business, CBD, uh, LSD, psilocybin, and they have a technology that can move their product much quicker in front of people in real time, in real stores, even though the product isn't there in the stores virtual retail shopping. Let's take a look at another company that's involved. We're looking at Pervasip, but when we look at Pervasip, we're actually going to see two of the partners listed over there at the company's website. Pervasip is listed there. You can see they are on the OTC market, ticker PVSP. This is a holdings company that has invested in Cartel Biotech. Matter of fact, it's so important, it's actually listed in their description here. Pervasip Corp is a developer of companies and technologies in high value emerging markets. For decades, it has developed, bought, and sold businesses. It recently purchased a 5% interest in Cartel Biotech Inc., a U.S. based research and development company working in South Korea with a consortium of doctors and researchers. But then you've got a second partner mentioned here. Artesian Corporation. Remember, Artesian Corporation is another one of their partners. This company, Pervicep, purchased 100% of the Artesian Corporation, and along with that came the subsidiary, Zen Asset Management, better known as ZAM, Z-A-M. This is a diversified asset management company that was founded to acquire, develop, and support companies and technologies in the cannabis industry, and their annual revenues already exceed $17 million. Now, all of this right here is for one purpose, for Cartel Biotech. As we can clearly see, looking at this PR that came out about three weeks ago, July 6th, Pervasip Corp targeting the $1 trillion global wellness products market. Pervasip and Cartel announce Artesian Wellness Joint Venture. They go on to tell us that Pervasip announced a partnership with Cartel Biotech to develop and launch a wellness joint venture. The two companies together, combined with a network of world-renowned stakeholders in the wellness space, announced the development of the Artesian Wellness Joint Venture to bring high-quality wellness and nutritional food products to the market. Artesian Wellness will use unique low-THC cannabinoids, terpenes, and well-known plant extracts to develop a range of products for worldwide distribution. Not just South Korea, not just the United States. No, no, no. They want to conquer the world. And why not? Last year alone, there was almost a trillion dollars spent on wellness products. So it is a giant market, a trillion dollars a year. Now, we're told a little bit more down here about the acquisition that Pervasip made. They tell us that Pervasip owns Artesian Corporation and its subsidiary, Zen Asset Management, better known as ZAM. ZAM's existing clients operate four licensed cannabis cultivations and one processing facility in Washington. Most of the biomass produced by these independent cultivators has been sold historically under the Artesian brand, including all-time top-selling products in flour in Washington State. Now, when you jump over here to Pervasip's site, they give us a little bit more information about Artesian because it's not a no-name company. They have made a name for themselves, and they're doing very well. Artesian is the ninth largest cannabis consumer brand in North America, according to MJ Biz Magazine, November 2021, in all of North America, and they only work in Washington. That's pretty good. Pervasip acquired the Artesian intellectual property and made Artesian the first of possibly many consumer-focused brands in our brand arsenal. As one of Washington's original cannabis brands, Artesian branded products are the all-time fourth best selling in Washington across all product categories and the all-time third in flour. 
Their commitment to quality and consistency behind the Artesian brand has built a substantial following fueling more than $69 million in wholesale sales to a distribution network with more than 200 retailers. That equals out to over $200 million in retail value since their inception in 2015. Now I think this is where it picks up. Zam is looking to expand its service into Oregon and California through similar long-term arrangements with cannabis licensees operating in these states. Now, I told you, this is a consortium. All these companies are working together. They're not each staying in their own lane, doing their own thing. They're helping each other so that the whole cartel biotech industry can rise. So they're asking, they're looking for something in Oregon. Well, when you jump back over here to cartels, uh, business overview, their deck. They tell us right here that Cartel International is partnering with Ironsight to create a leased farmland model and mechanized and scalable support for specialty crops like hemp and cannabis and eventually psilocybin. Well, when I went and looked up this site, Ironsight, I was brought here. And you know, at first I thought this can't be the right site because I'm reading this information over here and they're talking about shooting and rifles and the military and hitting the target. And it's like, oops, wrong page. But it was just a metaphor. Fact of the matter is it is the right page. Scroll down a little bit more and they tell us, we're a team of veteran and tech ag entrepreneurs with deep history as ranchers, farmers, and technologists. We started the industry by helping launch one of Oregon's First, fully accredited hemp and cannabis testing labs, shaping state regulations and policies while building industry relationships statewide. We use that experience to enhance and refine the strategies we use on our farm today. Now, it just may be a coincidence that Cartel is making a deal with a company in Oregon, or they know darn well that Persevip is needing someone because Zam is looking for somebody in Oregon and California so they can continue doing what they're doing. And they're doing this on behalf of Cartel Biotech. So I'm thinking all of this is just creating that bigger picture. Now there was another piece of news that came out the other day. So this press release came out July 13th. And what's most interesting is that we are on Cartel Holding Group's page. But this is not Cartel Holdings Group news. No, this is here to serve Holdings News, ticker HTSC. So what the heck is their news doing on their page? For bloody good reason, I tell you. They made a deal here. In all simple terms, the best way to put it is that HTSC leased part of their property for $500,000. And the company that they rented it to Agrodynamics is going to make some money farming it, but they're going to give 45% of that money to HTSC and then they get to keep some. But this only lasts for a while. It's going to last up until December 31st, 2027. Now the CEO goes to explain why he's doing this. He says, we seek to acquire and manage undervalued assets without incurring significant fixed overhead costs. Consequently, we've sold a portion of our hemp project for a limited term to a company with hemp expertise that can build a joint hemp project without us having to incur any cash expenditures. So someone else is going to have to take care of all the expenses to farm that property. They're just going to get profit for a few years. But how does cartel work into this? I don't know. Just lucky, I guess, because we learned down here. We have also included in this project our affiliate, Cartel International, a wholly owned subsidiary of Cartel Holdings Group. Cartel has expertise in hemp and psilocybin and will earn 10% of the profits in addition to receiving $160,000 worth of equity securities. They're going to get some stock as well. Now, we've got another piece of news here that came out about a month ago, and this is big news, folks. This is really where everything is hinging on right now. This is what is going on in South Korea. Cartel Holdings Group is pleased to announce its wholly owned subsidiary, Cartel International, has received an agreement by Dr. Kyung Park, the head of the Department of Horticulture and Life Science in Yongnam University, in partnership with Pervisip Corps where both will be acting as the exclusive expert groups providing services and support for the development of the indoor smart growing section of the project. Cartel is pleased to announce that it 
and Dr. Kyung Park, a Cartel Biotech Inc. team member, have received an agreement by the Hemp Regulation Free Special Zone Project Promotion Team, and both Cartel International and Artesian Corporation have been contracted by Dr. Kyung Park to act as exclusive consultant groups to provide services and support for the development of indoor smart growing, one of the three core strategic areas of interest in the development for Korean CBD industry regulation sector. South Korea has committed $40 million to fund various aspects of this emerging industry. They are funding various greenhouse trials, research, policy, development, testing efforts, all sorts of stuff. Now remember, Artesian Corporation is owned by Pervasip, and it is Artesian Corporation and Cartel International that have been invited in as exclusive experts on setting up this smart grow area for their CBD in South Korea. That is a pretty big deal, and they're going to be able to do all the research that they want to develop all the different types of pro formulations, pre formulations, medications, whatever it is they're after. And then they'll actually probably be able to get it on the market. And Asia is a huge, huge market. They go on to tell us here that Cartel International Corps CEO Kai Kim has developed a potent network of government institutions, university research labs, companies, and individual experts in his work on developing CBD-related efforts in South Korea over the past six years. This will be the gateway for Cartel to further develop its opportunities in Asia. See, the great thing about Cartel, they really aren't a startup company. They've been at this building it, aligning themselves with a lot of important people, important companies, important institutions, so that when they take off, they get a full launch. I'm really liking what I see here. Well, as you saw, trying to do research on this company wasn't exactly easy or linear. We had to go to this company's PRs to get some news, then go over to that company's PRs to get some news, and even jump to Cartel's PRs to get some more news. I mean, that's ridiculous, but it wasn't disappointing. We see a lot is going on with this company. They are setting up for a launch. Seriously, they've got a consortium of brainiacs, doctors, researchers, universities, scientists all working on the same goals, trying to find formulations and medications working with psilocybin and CBD. And they're working in a country, South Korea, that's giving them license to do that, even backing them up. Then you've got the collaboration of all these different companies working together, and they're all pushing the same direction. They all want the same thing. It's not like Pervasep is after its own success. They're pushing to get Cartel Biotech up that ladder of success, as I keep saying. And as long as all of these people and all these companies keep pushing the same direction, I don't see how Cartel cannot get to the moon. Now, we're going to look at some details here, share structure and stuff, and then we'll go look at the chart, and then I'll give you a summary of a lot of this information we've been looking at. I don't want you to forget it, but don't let this be the end of your research. You go out and do some more DD when we're all done. I know I didn't cover it all. So what was the relative volume with Cartel on Friday? Oh, do, 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 do. Not good. She normally does 112,000 a day. I mean, that's not even notable. But Friday, she did 60,000 shares, almost half. That is definitely under the radar. Do you think it needs to be down that low, or do you think it's about ready to pop? Share structure. Hopefully, we got a low float. Not bad. We can deal with 42 million in the float. That's going to make us some good headway, I promise. Financials. We shouldn't have anything but zeros because they are a shell company. And their disclosures, well, we know their financials are current because they're current. And filings, ooh, well, that's surprising. They don't have any filings here. Now, remember, folks, we do not have any financials for cartel. All the financials we have here are for Quinch, Q-E-N-C. And they're not doing that business anymore. So we have got to wait for the private company that just became public to bring their financials and then we're going to know more about this company now there is no news at least not that we haven't looked at so let's go check out that chart 
So we're gonna be doing our charting over here at Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform. If you need one or you wanna back up to your Weeb or your trade station, just in case they go <laughs> go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account. Just keep your account open. That's all you really gotta do. And you can use this anytime you want for free. So we are looking at KRTL. We have to look at two tickers to do that though, right? There was a reverse merger, a ticker change on July 22nd, which is the first day for KRTL. The last day, July 21st for QENC. Now we could go looking at the history of QENC, but I really don't see the point. It was a different company doing a different business with different management. It's got nothing to do with everything that's going on now. So what I'm gonna do is just pay attention to the transition. I want to see how the investors were feeling when it left QENC and became KRTL. So on July 21st, it finished the day at two and a half cents. When the bell went off the next day, it fell all the way to a penny, over a hundred percent drop. But impressively, it jumped 600 percent to six cents. And then depressively, it fell the rest of the day all the way down here. Believe it or not, it finished just a smidge higher than it finished the day before. Here, it was two and a half cents. Here, it's 2.6 cents. So there was a little bit of improvement. And speaking of improvement, she has jumped from 2.6 cents up here to a nickel. You're looking at about 80% gains over the last 40 days. Uh, four days. <laughs> 40 days and 40 nights. Now, right now, she is kind of in a channel. She's going up and down, up and down, not doing much. Technicals are strong as she sits right now on the MACD, above the signal line, above the yellow line. Now, what I'm going to do, folks, is I'm going to throw QNC to the wind, if you don't mind. I don't see any reason to actually look at the chart. So I'm going to bring up KRTL, and we're going to look at this on different technicals. This is my PPO, my percentage price oscillator. A lot like the MACD, but it works with the percentage of the price rather than the price itself. And it looks good. It's crossed the pink just like the MACD up on top, and it is pointing up. And whenever you see it pointing up, you can watch the price start to move up as well. Coming down to a five day, five minute view, she hit that low again on the 25th. She hit uh, point, she hit 2.6 cents on the first day on the market and now three days later she hits it again. But between that low bubble and that high bubble is 100% gains over the last four days. This last day she only had 60,000 shares but she was definitely jumping up. She went from uh, Four, three, up to five, three, back down to four. I mean, she was moving. That one bar right there went from 4.2 cents up to a nickel. You're looking at almost 20% jump in five minutes. There was only 60,000 shares moved on Friday. So imagine what'll happen if the company puts out a tweet or all Twitters start tweeting, or if better yet, a news press comes out. This thing is probably going to go to the moon. Now, whether it stays on the moon, that's a whole nother story. But you got to consider that too. This company looks good for the long run, doesn't it? But that's where more DD is going to come in handy. Now, speaking of more DD, I told you that I did have some more information that I could share with you just so you wouldn't forget. So here's the first one, securing partnerships and investments. Now, I'm not going to read all this to you. You can read it, but I will point out a couple of new things here that we did not discuss. Uh, along with South Korea, Canada, and USA, they are opening up new offices in Colombia, Peru, and Laos as well. They've also just signed a manufacturing agreement with a company called C3 Co. LTD. This is a South Korean company. They do already have some products. I looked at their website, nothing really special, but their products are unique. They've got one product that is a placenta cream. It's not human placenta, it's horse placenta, but it's a unique company. Uh, we talked about the virtual retail marketing system. Well, there's another one called Genius. You know, there are reasons to do more DD because there's actually more information that's going to excite you. And they talk about all of the commercialization rights, uh, stocks investing in each other, companies investing in each other, the collaboration, the support. They see it, I see it, and that is what I've been reiterating over and over. And the other thing is just final thoughts, folks. You know, really, if you think about it, the company is a humane company. They're making products that are going to end suffering for a lot of things we just have no 
fixes for, no cures. And they have a passion to do this. They have a green light in South Korea to do all the development and research that they need. So I have a lot of hope for this company. I think they have potential. We have a need. If they can fill it, I think they can grab that market and be a first mover starting in Asia and coming over to here. But as I said, there's a lot more information out there. You're going to have to do your own DD. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.